Megamind 2 is absolutely a great film. And no, before you ask, I have not gone and lost my mind when everyone is talking about the horrendous Doom Syndicate. Because of the fact I am not talking about the Doom Syndicate in this case. I mean, yeah, I will talk about some of it pertaining to a few in this video, but I'm actually talking about Megamind The Button of Doom. The 15 minute short that was released on the original movie's Blu-ray that actually starred Will Ferrell and David Cross in it compared to whatever crap they decided to do with direct to streaming. Where the best part of it all was the fact it was also written by the original writers of the film who also sadly wrote the Doom Syndicate for some odd reason which is befuddling to the mind. Like if you have watched it, and may god have mercy on your soul if you actually did, you will notice how badly awful the dialogue sounds compared to the first. Where this short literally feels like the only good thing you could do to continue Megamind as a sequel without giving up the strong messages, feeling like it's only a certain limit that you can get before leaving it confused to what you know if you know what I mean. Because the simple short just has everything that Megamind had with the animation being complete and the original actors and the funny action to go with it. The short that just dives more into the development of our main character as a hero as he learned to become, and one that starts out trying to be more of the clean hero by selling off all of his evil inventions to the public. Where at the same time, he reveals that he created a super suit that copies the powers of Metro Man, similar to the end of the first movie when he disguised himself as a bit as Metro Man going against Titan before being revealed. And when you notice that fact, you you can see that this short is trying to hammer the main message that was done for Megamind's character, to become who he truly is and why he referred to him as a great hero in the past. The one that should be praised and should be actually called Megamind 2 being completely genius. And we see in this short, this is something that Minion questions as not really him which makes sense from the surface observation but also to the entire story of both Doom and the first one of being who you are and what you're meant to be. This is where the button comes into play in this very short where it is revealed to be an AI he created and somehow forgot for a few seconds that he put his entire evil personality into and transforms into a huge robot called the Mega Mega Mind. And as it turns out, he struggles against his own creation despite his best efforts to copy Metro Man in some way, which is a parallel to the original story with his youth when they were both in school and similar to Titan Battle I just mentioned. Because if you remember that scene from that film, he was able to go toe to toe and catch Howl off his guard while being who people thought he was rather than himself. But when he was revealed to be himself, Titan actually was able to catch on, take over with his powers and destroy what Megamind had. You know, the gig was just generally up and it didn't work for him to actually become Metro Man in that moment. How it shows that Megamind cannot succeed when he's trying to be someone he's not, like he did for a villain for the most part before Metro Man retired, and then trying to be a complete hero like Metro Man was before getting smacked by his own evil persona. That he only succeeds if he is who he truly is. And he feels like giving up at this point until Minion actually reminds him that he should be himself again. That what we all know at this point is that Megamind should be using his talents and the brain that he has. All the inventions he created by himself that the world rejected him as a person who does evil is where his super abilities comes into play. I mean, that's literally in the title of his name. His brain is just so big that it has vast quantities of ideas without having superpowers of some sort. Which does encourage him since he does have the technology he uses against Metro Man during his fake death where he uses the Spider bot to defeat his own self. And you already kind of get that picture of what happens next since most of the action does take place in this part and the short is of course very short. Winning the day and finally becoming who he truly was for the second time in a row and fulfilling what a sequel should be. An affirmation if you would like to call it where the short solidifies himself in this role rather than needing a sequel or any other content regarding it. Because Megamind to be frank is just something that really doesn't need a sequel with its story at all, need another full length film to actually flesh out, and only a short story that confirms the events as seen fit and one we will have to break after I finish this part. Because in the next scene contrasted with his white Metro Man persona he used to defeat himself, he just goes back to his literal old black suit while dealing with the naughty children who he sold the dehydration gun to. How they never really did anything to free their parents but actually used it against him, acting like villains and how he acts like his original villain itself in a way that is done for good. This is the best part of the entire short because he finally fits the role he was meant to be. That Megamind is indeed Megamind and not Metro Man at all, but still a hero. Not Titan and not anyone else that rock and actually saw him as when the call was finally set off for the entire journey to end. Just a simple good time if you wanted to watch something beyond the first film that still fits the billing without feeling too unnecessary in a way that is a normal sequel should actually be. Short enough to satisfy everyone compared to, you know, something else. 
where unfortunately because this short was, well, short, I do have to go back and talk about the Doom Syndicate in some way. I did not watch the entire film, nor do I plan to do it at all, including the series at this point, because it just feels too unnecessary to do so anymore, and you've probably seen so many people clam on this film anyway, and I've talked about it enough in the problem video. Because at this point in time, I've only literally watched clips at the end and the beginning of the film. And boy, because of that, it sure does feel insulting to everyone who did like the original works and the Button of Doom. This one takes place just two days after the end, I suppose, where again I have to remind you that this was still written by the original same people who made Megamind and the Button of Doom. It is something that makes no sense when you already have people who were behind that mind of the original in that era of DreamWorks films that now splinter off into something new with streaming. It's like what most people say for other films like Madame Web, that you really have to blame some studio head's decision for this because it feels specifically made for a kid audience and only that. One done because they knew they had the property on their hands and had to actually promote it in some way, where you have to actually go back to the beginning where Katzenberg was CEO as DreamWorks, where in one of the rare moments I agree with him, he said that these films all shared an approach and tone and idea of parody and did not travel well internationally when regarding sequels to types of films like Megamind. That specifically, it cannot really be added on for financial reasons first and more evidently by the new series from this movie how it cannot work critically story-wise either and only regress back into something that's made for kids specifically. Because only looking at those first six minutes, we see a story that is not reminiscent of the Megamind we knew except for the montage of clips from the first, ones that feel super jarring when you stare at the Megamind in this scene with the animation that the movie and the series does and then see his past with the original film, reminding you of a complete film that this universe once shared. It just looks weird and unnecessary for him to speak in the fourth wall moment to explain to people, or kids in this case, what is actually going on when it doesn't feel like he's completely staring at the camera at all, or it was even necessary since he only narrated behind the scenes. Then of course it goes back to the present day events where it shows us a bunch of guys just dressed up in fish suits who wants to sell fish to the black fish market if that makes sense. Like that really just feels so super lame from someone like Hal. Like how do you go from that as a perfect villain and then get to this and then get to something worse when the Doom Syndicate shows up? It just makes no sense when you're putting some villains that honestly belong to a Nick or a Disney Junior show because it looks just like that. And then it's only made worse by the fact that Minion had to change his name because of a cease and desist order to Old Chum to further degrade the entire story because you know he's on the good side now. That just does not make any sense at all too because his name was Minion because that was the role he played with Megamind himself. Where he himself encouraged Megamind to be who he was in that short we just saw which should mean the same for him instead of rewriting all of those points. It just makes sense and it's easier to accept that his name is like Minion. And then watching the clips of the ending, you get the other half of the stupid villains with a team that also spells baby cartoon with two year old dialogue of the stereotypical villainy explaining things that don't need to be explained. Like watching what little I've witnessed from these spoilers just does not match up with the first film or the, what the button did at all. There just doesn't seem to be like any grand lesson other than the fact he explains he's a good guy to villains now who never existed until this very point in time. Where at the very end it also shows Megamind's former mentor Maka Villain or that's how I would like to pronounce his name because I've never actually looked into this film much who takes over this whole syndicate game wanting revenge against Megamind which literally contradicts the entire first story that where society actually made him that way. Raised in prison and actually was alone for the most part with Minion, inventing what he invented. Once again reminding you that the writers of Megamind also wrote this to put that into perspective where they suddenly forgot what they actually did. How do you honestly ruin and forget every single thing that made the character the way he was in one film that wasn't even supposed to exist? It just seems super illogical and doesn't make any sense for you to do at all. Because what we learned with something like the Button of Doom was something that reinforced everything that Megamind was. Being who he was committing to this new life of his, everything that made him him was still him but now used in an overall good way and the only good sequel with the use of the word Doom. It is about the understanding of who somebody is in their path in life that worked more than the parody aspect that the film liked to also do. Opening up a thin veil that society never thought was possible in the first place, just like a terrible sequel that doesn't understand its character or world very well. That it is simply the fault of making it into the streaming game that has utterly failed except for the strong few like Netflix. A studio that just seemed pressured into making content and only saw how Megamind had developed a cult following as a property to use without understanding the audience who watched it in the first place. So I really say to you
issue with this entire video is that Megamind 2 is indeed a genius sequel. If you regard and only talk about the one that had the original voices and is about 15 minutes long including the credits in that regard. One that truly stood to confirm to us the ability that a hero has and can be if they accept themselves as is. And without that, then the hero would truly lose his way and status like they have tried to do half-heartedly demonstrate in this new film. And I'm all done now, so goodbye.